Okay, continuing with Tillman 119, first eight, not first eighth, first 26. How many letters are in Hebrew alphabet? 20, 20, 22. 22. That sounds right. That sounds right, yeah. Okay, whatever. The first eight sukkim. First eight sukkim. All right, so uh, let's read it, translate it, review it, and then dive in. Okay. And I, 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 uh, I touched up the translations just a little bit. Okay. Ashri, Tamimi, Dara, Kahol, Himba, Torah, Hashem. Praiseworthy or happy, okay, are those whose way is whole, that's Tamim as in whole or without blemish. Kahol, Himba, Torah, Hashem, who follow, let's say who follow, who follow, thank you, the Torah of Hashem. Okay. Now, I mentioned last time that there's no good word for, uh, Afre, other than like the Greek concept of eudaimonia. So I found out that there is a, uh, there, there's no term, but eudaimonic, which sounds like a little bit too close to demonic. Uh, but check out this definition though, eudaimonic. The term eudaimonia is etymologically based in the Greek words you, good, and daimon, spirit. It describes the notion that living in accordance with the one's daimon, spirit, which we take to mean character and virtue leads to a good life, right? So like, it is the perfect word. It's just not... No, 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 one, not in the video. In, in in, no, yeah. And like Tamar said, it's because we don't really have that concept of modern English. Uh, just like, uh, you know, you don't have a, a word for Fafam in English, right? Because there's no concept of a Fafam. There's a sage, there's an intellect, there's an academic, there's, you know, there's no Chacham as a personality. That's what the Drobi's example. Yeah. Wise man is not, doesn't capture a Chacham. Yeah. Okay. Ashre notre edosav b'chole vidrashuhu. Uh, praiseworthy, happy are those who preserve his testimonies. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, a uh, note there is the same as Shomer, but we're just translating as preserve because to differentiate it. Uh, with their entire heart, they seek him with a capital H. Okay, three is the hard word here. Aflo falu avla bidraha palafu. Even or certainly they have not done, or also, I guess, uh, they have not done injustice or wrongdoing. Uh, in, his, uh, in his ways, they have walked. Um, four, Ata Tivisi Fikudecha Lishmor Maod. You commanded your precepts to guard exceedingly. Five, Achalai, I beseech you, or uh, oh, that I would, you know, expressing longing, okay, but I'm, I just said, I beseech you that my ways be uh, Yikonu, be made firm like Kani um, uh, or, uh, or or Yikonu like Lahachin, uh, Hamechi Mitzade Gaver. To guard your statutes. Then I will not be ashamed when I gaze upon all your mitos. Um, uh, I praise, thank, or acknowledge you with upbringing of heart. When I learn the judgments of your righteousness, your statutes I will guard. Do not abandon me exceedingly. Yeah, okay. So we'll get back to the, the uh, text in a little while. I'll just review our, uh, our, our approach. So um, Radak said that there are 11 terms. Or 10. 10 terms? Yeah, I get mixed up with the different people. Whatever. How many, how many terms? Uh, <laughs> Radak is 11. That's what I thought. Yeah. <coughs> 11, yeah. Right. So Redox says that there are 11 terms and uh, they are uh, all the components of the Torah, but he includes they're not just Torah because he also included, um, uh, where is it? Emuna. Oh, this is too far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amira and Dibor include um, uh, mitzvos. And then Dibor and Amira also include promises of God. And then Dibor also is a, a kinoi for God's will in nature. So like laws of nature. And then uh, Imuna is also, could also be fulfilling his, his uh, words in nature. Okay. So then he said, and this is our big move. He says uh, that when the Pusik mentions one of them, it really means any of them. Okay. Now I realized something like five minutes ago, which maybe you can say it doesn't mean all of them. Here's, I translated this phrase here. Okay. Um, when it mentions all these terms, each one in a positive, his intention is not for that term specifically, but rather it mentions one, and similarly the others. So I read that last time as any of the others. It could just mean some others. 
In other words, it doesn't mean that you have to be able to substitute everyone for all of them. Okay, but it uh, it does like so. If it says let's say chukin, uh, it could mean chukin and mishpatim. It might not mean laws of nature, though. You know. Okay, so um, so we we got to keep it uh loose here. Okay. Yeah. The last line there. Yeah, that doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters for our our method. Multiple of these words in, in one possible, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is the redoc. And the way we said that we're going to do it is let's just type this out because I didn't type it out last time. All right, so our approach, oops, our approach is, um, oh, this is so slow. My computer is slowing down. Physical world, okay. Tier one, uh, interpretation is. Uh, all terms can be substituted for all other terms. Okay. Tier two interpretation is um, uh, ditto, but uh, he chose the one which brings out a nuance. Okay. So really it's still flexible. And then tier three is Davka, that term to the exclusion of others. Wait, but isn't what we're just talking about analogies? Um, isn't it all terms can be substituted for yeah? Yeah. Some of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to include that still in tier one because I'm uncomfortable doing that. Yeah. Okay. So that was our approach that we we're going to take. <coughs> and then I think I want to do one. I want to do one thing before we actually start here. You know, ordinarily what we do is we read the whole Mismore and then we come up with a possibility for like a like an intuition about the theme of the entire thing. Since we're not going to do that, because otherwise we'll. Be dead. <laughs> um, uh, I want to read to you three. Uh, th thankfully, it seems like there is a, a, a you know consensus as to like the general thrust of this. I want to read you three um, <coughs> Mefarshim uh, statements of like what the Mizmor is about. Okay, so the first one is the Meiri. If you want to look in the packet, is it's on. Let's see, I gotta find it. It's on the. Uh, it's in the middle of the Meiri. I just don't know where. I don't know which page. Uh, it is looks like it's on the fourth, like printed page, or it's the set, back of the second page. Um, uh, uh, the very first line on the top right. The Inyan. So the reason why he circles through these uh, these terms is as follows. The subject of this uh, or theme of this mismore is a tefila to God. Lioso Meir La Azor Lanafsho, that God. Should, or that he should be um, awakened, inspired to help his soul. I don't know who the he is. Um, it might be in David. The David is like like rousing himself. Lahachin osa, or no, hold on. Because we weird to use the word meir for God. Yeah. Maybe he's being meir himself, that God, la azor lanapsho, should help his soul. Lahachin osa, to prepare it or to ready it, and to support it in the uh, of knowledge of his ways. Exalted is he. Hold on, I'm just going to pause this until... Okay, uh, so in other words, he's, uh, he wants God to help him with uh, knowing his ways. to know his ways. David is making known his abundant yearning and desire for this. And his anxiety or his worry about the scoundrels who uh, burden him or distract him and prevent him from this. He's Ororo, again, there's that word again. He's Ororo, Shibho Rish Asan, that with all of their wickedness, Vahatradasam, and all of their like uh, distracting him. Uh, that they're not able to divert him and to, to push him away from this. But at all times, uh, his eyes and his heart are constantly to be uh, involved in Avodos HaKel, and to cling to the ways of the Torah and the Mitzvahs. But he's asking for help. Uh, in accordance with the uh, overflow of the spirit of Hashem that encircles him, I don't know, that, that is in him, whatever, and his word on his tongue, the doors of his mouth are going on the hinges of the Torah and the Mitzvah, meaning like, like a rotating door of all these Torah terms. 
Um, in all of their components and their details. And he's satiating himself by mentioning an abundance of these terms. As much as he can increase. Like someone who is, I think I said this last time on my own, like someone who yearns to praise something. He, he goes on at length with many praises. Repeating himself with different words. Okay, we don't actually even need more than that. Okay, Miri's good enough. Okay, I was going to do this for but it's pretty much, actually, no, I want to do this for it's, it's the same, but he adds one more element. Right, yeah, Miri's basically saying like this. David wants to be only involved in Torah and to not be distracted, but he realizes he needs help because there are many forces, specifically people who prevent him from doing this. Yeah, and so that's why he's mentioning all these terms because he's expressing his yearning for all this. Like how how much he desires it. Yeah, how much he desires it. Yeah, yeah, and his relationship to it. Okay, now let's look at the Sforno, which is going to be on the, the first page. Okay, um, uh, second from the bottom. Kuvites pozem is more hanase ba alef beis amar hamelach david shatora halokis he derech hachaim hamuchuban la asher as yisrael chayal one. So he David Melch says that the divine Torah is a way of life that directs uh Israel to um to eternal life. Ubikesh Rahim Allah. when he's asking for mercy on himself, now here's the part that Swarno adds, which Meiri does not have, the Al Yisrael and on Israel, um Meesa Kelis Barach from God, Shahu Yadrichim Vyazrim Lahavin Hachelak Ayuni Batoraso, that God guide him, them and help them to understand the theoretical component of Torah. That's like the ideas. Shahu Yadias Godel Habori Isbarah Hamoli Diraso, which is uh, knowledge of the greatness of the Creator, which gives rise to fear of Him. The Adias Darche Tuba Hamoli named Ahavaso, and knowledge of the ways of His goodness that give rise to Ahava. Okay, nice clean divisions here. I okay. So. How so? I, I wouldn't have necessarily group um, understanding of like the ideas of Torah with Yura and the. Um, the benefits of Torah with Ahava. So I think both of these are. Um, are the theoretical. And he's saying that the theoretical is divided into two. One is Yudias Godel Habore, knowledge of God's greatness. And the other is Yudias Darche Tuvo, and that leads to Abba. Yeah. yeah, so I think, that, I think that, that, that makes sense. And then he says, oh, by the way, this is a whole thing with Swarma, by the way. So he, you'll find him oftentimes divide all of Torah into the Chelek Ha'iyuni and the Chelek Hamasi. Iyuni is, is what we call perfection of intellect. Masi is perfection of action or, 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 or goof. So for example, I think he says, um, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say examples. I'm not sure. Okay, anyway. So the, the, this, this is an example. Lahavin kamochin es hachelik hamasi mimenu, mimena, also to understand the practical component of it. Hanechlach el edos she mitzvos mukhubanus laharim mikshol midirak amenu, vel pikudim she mitzvos mukhubanus shieti fa adam luzulaso derak mitzvah alzeh. Okay, he goes into his divisions of these, but basically that's all of his uh, his categories. Okay, skip his, his terminology. We don't need new terms here. Um, uh, next page. This king is asking um, God that he help him and his people uh, that he help them to be involved in the knowledge of his Torah and his mitzvahs to keep them. This is by enlightening their, the eyes of their intellects to understand and to remove the, the, the uh, obstacles. And here's another new point. When he saw through Ruach HaKodesh and he prophesied and he saw the, um, the uh, tsara of the subjugation of the kingships, this kibbutz galios and the ingathering of exiles, and Wilhamis, I bet it's Gog and Magog, Gog, Wilhavli HaMashiach, Vishuaso, and the war of Gog and Magog and the travails of Mashiach and his salvation. Amen, his Paul Bazel al Kulam. He arose and he died in this. So the main difference between the Meiri and David and Melech is. Um, the Meiri and the Sorry. <laughs> A lot of differences between the Meiri and David and Melech. The main difference between the Meiri and Sforno is uh, Sforno includes the nation. Uh, and also, Sforno puts a little bit more emphasis on the. Um, I mean, he makes a cleaner division between knowledge of God and doing the mitzvos. Not that the Meiri denies that distinction, but like Sforno has like a clean uh, distinction there. Yeah, okay. And then one more little thing. This is not even a whole thing uh, for, for the entire parrot. 
in the commentary attributed to the Rosh bomb, which I don't know what the deal is with that. I guess we don't know for sure that it's the Rosh bomb. He gives a specific circumstance that David was davening in. He says, Afabesa ze asa b'cholio. He's saying this when he was sick. Okay. V'chol and I don't know if this is sick. Like when he was like old? I don't know if this is when he was dying sick because I think that is just when he was old. Does it call him sick there? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Yosef, yeah. when was David and Melech sick? Not including his old age. Unless it calls, Unless him. It calls him that. Do you know a time when he got sick? Well, I believe there's a specific thing. Like, all I realize is his old age. So- where you like, yeah, specific sleeping concubine. Yeah, like, yeah, right. That was in his old age. Yeah. Yeah. Sick, yeah. yeah. Does, does he, what happens when, um, yeah, sure. When he counts uh, the people. Oh, right. I, maybe a fake people. sickness in his youth in order to. Escape. No, that's, that's a different one. That's a different one. Yeah, that, that, that is, that's when he fakes like a mental that's illness, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but is, is there, when he counts the people and then Hashem basically says like, what punishment do you want? Is yeah. sickness one of the options? Well, he chooses yeah, plague. He chooses plague. plague, right. So does he get sick in that plague? I don't believe so. Okay. What's the context? Uh, well, that, <laughs> he's stating that as a context for Tillam Kufi test. He says that it's, uh, he wrote this when he was sick. Okay. So I don't know, it sounds like he's referring to a specific, and he says, yeah. he's speaking about Torah, why? Because when he's sick, he can't be involved in Torah. Wait, is this, is it, why, why does it have to be Dafka when he, in that way he's old? Well, we were wondering if he's described as sick when he's old. He's not. He's, he's not. Old. Yeah, that's why I thought when he's well, yeah, he David. Old, then he was, uh, he was cold. Yeah. Yeah, but not, I don't think it uses the word Huli. Figure out what yeah, yeah. All right. So if you like the Rosh, like is there a reason why the? I don't know. I wouldn't have guessed that from the parak, but that's what the Rosh bomb is saying. Um, I guess. I mean, what what do you think would prompt the Rosh bomb to say this? I mean, if if you had to speculate. Context Could be the context that we haven't seen. Did we? Oh, the. Huh. He would only have time to raise this in his more. So the, the, also, like he would want to just expound, expound. He's like, oh God. Uh, so I, 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 by the way, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't point this out. By the way, this is interesting where it comes in between in, in the sefer. Uh, the one before it is the last parak of Hallel, uh-huh. and then the one after it is the yeah. first year Hamalus. You know, so I don't know what this is doing here. It's, yeah, it's funny. According to the Rashbam, attributed to the Rashbam. Yeah, if he wrote it when he was sick. And the reason he wrote it is because he's Mavat Bel Talmud Torah. Is he saying that writing this is just old Talmud Torah, like writing Kufit Uh That's a good question. Also, Bahalio. No, we're definitely not. Yeah. I mean, maybe he wasn't able to be involved in like serious, like give him a Talmud study or something. Right. That could be. That could be. Uh, hold on. There might be a pasuk about that in this parak. Just one second. Uh, no, just one second. Um, it's not that Pasuk. What about? Ani Toraska Shiashati, Kitoraska Shash. No, never mind. I thought there was a Pasuk, whatever. I thought there was a Pasuk about comparing um, Talem to Torah, but yeah. Just sort of like, why are you saying the person said this would, like, would, be Talatora. Do you think of a, a person composing a pewd as Talatora? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Have you read our pewd? <laughs> I mean, it has to be a a, a pewd of Chachma, but like, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, we learn Putin. I mean, we, you know, it's a, it's a text of Chachma. Yeah, in fact, that, that's what um, Rebbe's made that point a lot in uh, Kinos Shirim about how, like, you know, in the Umus Olam, you have like sages. And then you have like poets, you know, like those are different classes. Our poets are poet sages. Like, like we only use, again, I, I know this kind of like unraveled at some point, uh, you know, but like, like the, the you know, our, um, uh, we, we give precedence to, uh, you know, Chachamim who write these things with ideas. Just, yeah. Yeah. Our first thing is what knows the person. Okay, I don't know. I I, I oh, thought he had the impression of a great Chacham. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So 
it, it's so it's possible that Isaiah is correct that we just haven't seen like any allusion to sickness here. I've read the parish before. I don't know if I've read the whole thing, but like it wasn't clear to me this is about sickness. I would say that maybe like um, for whatever reason, Rashman wants to make this into a bakasha based sara. And what would be a, a, a thing based sara that like doesn't mention defeating enemies is, you know, sickness when you can't be involved in Torah. You know, I don't know what would drive him to say that, but like, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right. So now that we have an idea. So, so all three of these interpretations here basically are saying that this is a parak that is about like David's yearning to be involved in Torah without distraction, uh, whether it's, you know, Talmud Torah or like uh, mitzvahs. Okay. And then the last thing we did in terms of our review, just to finish up the review, is we divided it into two. And we said that basically from five until the end, he's talking about himself. And then one through four, he's talking in abstract, but we didn't really get more specific than that. Okay. So now our questions are, what is the main idea of this, these eight psukim, or how do you account for the pivot? And then we got to figure out every single uh, phrase and how it flows. Okay. Now we're into the learning part. And we can ask questions also if, you, if there are questions we want to um, uh, add here, other than like, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? That he's focusing on like guarding. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're right. So we noted, not we, but we noted there is a theme of guarding, right? Because you have here, let's do green. You have here, Notsre Edosav, Lishmor Maod, Lishmor Chukacha, um, and Eshmor. So half of the Psukim have uh, guard, guarding in them. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to do something else that might help or might, if, if this doesn't help you, then just ignore it. Oops. What did I do? If this doesn't help you, help you ignore it. But um, if you wanted to do the, um, the Stam reading, so wa wa watch me make a mess of this. Hold on a second. Oops. Oh yeah. I, I want to oh yeah. In his way, in his Torah, they have they walked. You commanded your Torah to guard exceedingly. I beseech you that my Torah. Oh, uh, actually, that might be actual ways to guard your Torah. Uh, then I will not be shamed when I gaze upon all your Torah. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I learn. The Torah, your, oh, your Torah. Oh, I guess the Torah. Of, your Torah of righteousness, I guess. Yeah. Torah of righteousness. Your your Torah, I will guard you. Yeah, yeah. So if it helps you to to like ignore all the the details there. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, go ahead. Just a note, not a full on thought. Um, yeah. And this seems to be something that I've been noting recurringly in Tehillim is David HaMelech noting what he's viewing as a good. And then once he has that target set, looking and asking to get toward that. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That, I think that makes sense for explaining. Are you saying that to answer the pivot? Uh, not particularly. It was more just noting that and noting that that's also something that we've seen in other Prakim too. From his morning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I know, by the way, I'm sorry, hold on a second. I'm going to come back to what you're going to say in a second. I know why one of the other reasons I wanted to mention the Rosh Bam is because we're looking for ways that this can affect our tefillah. It is interesting that if you are uh, sick and it's interrupting you from learning Torah, then according to the Rosh Bam, this would be an appropriate thing to say. I just want to highlight that. Okay, not that you're allowed to like say to them to heal yourself, but I'm saying like like in terms of, um, of like, you know, uh, uh, expressing like a longing to not have the bittel Torah of sickness, you know, uh, however you want to work that out halakhically. Okay, back to what uh, David said, um, about what David said, um, the, uh, that uh, David and Melech oftentimes will state the ideal and then express his yearning to get there. So I do think that fits in really nicely with the, uh, the first half is he's outlining what the ideal person does, right? And then he's asking for God to help him to align himself with that. I think mean, that's a good working thesis here. So let's work with that. Okay, and let's dive into the particulars here. Okay, yeah. Maybe maybe you can say, I'm still trying to figure out how to say what it is exactly, but like that the ideal, ideally a person like, you know, lives entirely in line with the precepts and the like ideas of the Torah yeah. and expresses them 
beyond the measure that they are like statistically stated to be expressed because they are, I guess they have no, no like, they are entirely devoted to it, I would say. Uh, what do you mean by expressing it beyond the measure? Like, like they don't just do the mitzvahs, they do them with like the proper, like we said, um, with the with their entire heart they seek him, right? Like yeah. they don't just they don't just do Torah, they did they do it or they don't just fulfill the mitzvahs in like the in like a the clock at the drop out yeah. type of way. Like they they do it in a measure beyond I guess the prescribed okay. Mitzvahs. I think I think the, your your intuition is good. I think what we need to do, let's focus on the first half here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get rid of the green. Okay. And ask ourselves what is he saying about um, what's the relation between the two ashrays? Let's, let's start off with that, okay? We have two opening psukim with ashray, okay? Ashray to me me dorach al holchim b'toros Hashem, ashray no tre dosa v'chol lev yudushuhu. Or if you want to break into four components, ashray to me me dorach, to me me dorach is one quality, hal holchim b'toros Hashem is another quality, no tre edosa is one quality, and then b'chol lev yudushuhu is another quality. If we can, I, I feel like, and then, Okay, I mean, and then you, you could take Gimel also as another one. Avlu falu avla bidrachav halafu. Yeah, in fact, maybe that makes more sense. In other words, there's six qualities he's outlining, right? Possibly a maximum of six. Tmimi darach holchim b'tor Hashem notre edosav b'chole b'yushuhu lo falu avla and bidrachav halafu. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, we uh, when we were preparing this on Shavuos, we asked, we were bothered. The, the most troublesome puzzle in the first half is Gimel, right? Because why do you need to say Aflu Falu Avla if you've already said Tmi Me Darach and Hol Tim Torah Hashem? Well, that's just the first puzzle. It seems that it's 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 uh, repeating itself. I'll show you that those way is Hol. And then who also follow the Torah of Hashem? Like all those different things. So that's why I wanted to translate it as without blemish and following the Torah of Hashem is so removal of negative and having positive. Okay, okay. To me, that makes a that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, tomorrow. It's kind of vague, but um, I, I think many of these six things sound like a certain like completeness. Yeah, you know, it's not just that they're doing a good thing, but they're doing it without blemish. They don't have any sins. Right. Um, the b'cholev. Maybe that's three. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Good, that's good. Uh, I think I, is that the same thing you were getting at, Isaiah? Of like, like they're not just like uh, clocking it in. Is that right. the expression? Right? They're like, uh, is that the expression? Hmm. Clocking it in, like when oh, you just yeah. do your yeah, right. Yeah. So they're not just clocking it in. They're 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 maxing out uh, every aspect of perfection of Torah. Yeah, what were you gonna say? Nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm kind of just going through the list of what well, I guess we call the six things. Yeah. And it seems like it's. In, in in two ways, it's like working up almost. Okay. To me, at least, uh, one in that it's going from, I guess, more to less vague, or I guess you could say more like like vague to more pinpointed. Yeah. And that also just seems like it's, in a sense, uh, going from. It just seems to be going upward in, I guess you could say, perfection, in that like it ends off with. They walk in the ways of God. Yeah. Right. And then it, it, I saw something about, I don't know, something I'm just kind of getting. Okay. Right on. That's how I, my intuition went. Okay. That it's, it's in ascending order of perfection somehow. Yeah. yeah. The one uh, that, I have my own ideas, but yeah. The one that I think is, is like messing me up right now is the Ashe No Trey Dosa. Yeah. I can see like, maybe I'm trying to think about it in Paris. So like all of is like they don't do negative, maybe they don't violate mitzvahs and they follow all the mitzvahs. Yeah. Um, and then the second half of Bayes is, I would think, before Levi Yudushuhu, it's like they, um, I'm not sure what that is. Either, <laughs> okay. I'm definitely not yeah. sure. What, I kind of think it's something like what I was saying for like it's a completeness of how they approach Torah. Yeah. Um, when they seek it in a full manner. But I don't know what Ashray notes for Edo, so I was adding. It sounds like it's just repeating. Uh, to me, made there. Okay, right. Okay, go ahead. So, um, so I, I kind of want to start from the first one and then yeah. kind of work my way up. Uh, roughly have about five of them, I think, right now. I also have five of them. The hardest <laughs> one is the uh, first part of three. So I also don't have the first part of three. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So that's yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm a grass against straws for that one. Okay. Uh, I'm also grass against straws. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, fine. So, 
knowing I, I don't want to take one as positive negative though. Okay. A negative positive exercise. I want to say that uh, you can have ways that are whole, um, or you could be without blemish, but not necessarily following the Torah. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we could say something along the lines of there are people, uh, the others didn't have the Torah, they right. were blemish, or for the context, they were they were pretty perfected. Right. Um, oh, I see where you're going. Yeah. But then you can add on to that, you add on the Torah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and then from that, you don't just follow the Torah, but you like preserve it. Um, and then bleeding into this in the second pass, like you, you're not just like following it, it, it's almost becoming something that you're cultivating. And then with the entire heart, is like uh, descriptively like a furtherance of, of that, or or maybe oh, sorry, the entire heart would be, would be like making it like internal. And then the hard one is the injustice one. Um, oh, the only thing I had for that was that once you get into this, like making it uh, internal and then you know, your heart seemingly blending your emotions into the whole picture, uh, it's easier to maybe become blindsided by your, your ava session maybe, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And then you could end up accidentally doing an injustice. Mm -hmm. And then the highest level is like walking in the ways of God. Okay, um, I'm gonna just like summarize what he said. Okay, so uh, first, Pasuk, you're saying, Tamimi Darach is really like perfection without Torah, and then whole thing with Torah Hashem is, is the Torah itself, and these people have both, right? And it's not going to be like, it's like a Venn diagram that is very, very big in the center. In other words, that most of Torah is going to be in line with your perfection, right? There are certain things that you only have to do in Torah like because of the system or like you, you wouldn't need Torah to do that, but you know, and then there's going to be um, perfections that the Torah is not going to give you like, you know, um, novel of Torah, like the Torah can't legislate perfection. So, but the first puzzle is really talking about your like external um, actions, let's say. Okay. okay. Second puzzle is talking about your internal, internal world. Notes air is like in, in, in you know, inside and then the whole lave. Okay. Um, I, I have my own ideas about this. I'm just saying your uh, ideas yeah. right now. Um, Bidrachav Halachu is the ultimate, you're saying that's the ultimate level yeah, of like, yeah. like following God's ways. Now, the, the point you mentioned of Avlo follow Avla, I'm going to bring a rye for that. Uh, yeah, tomorrow you have a question on, on one of these points? I had a different take on that particular phrase, the Avlo follow. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll say what, uh, what I was going to say first, and then you can chime in on that, and then Isaiah has his take. It's also not that. Okay, <laughs> all right, good. That, that, that's the, the, the sticky point. Uh, in Avos, in Antignos Ish Soho. Oh, my God. I've learned this. Oh, you got it from this. Okay, there you I, go. I, I may have. Yeah. So Antignos Ish Soho, this is Avos 1 3. Kibel mi Shimon Hatadik. Hu haya omer alti hu kaavani ham shamshin esarav amnas la kabo pras. Don't be like servants who serve their master with the intent to receive reward. Elo have ella hevu kaavani ham shamshin esarav. Uh oh. Hold on. Almanas Shalola Kabo Pras. Yeah, okay, this is the correct Yersa. Mm -hmm. Right, not Shalo Almanas Lakabo Pras. Rather, you should be uh, like servants who serve their master with the intention to not receive uh, a, a prize. Vihe Mora Shamayim Aleichem. And let the fear of heaven be upon you. Okay, so the first idea is basically Lishma, right? Talking about serving God Lishma and not Shalo Lishma, uh, or serving God out of love and not out of fear. But then the question is why is he throwing Vihi Mora Shamayim Aleichem? <laughs> Uh, that the fear of heaven should be upon you. So the Rambam at the very end says, um, uh, no, did you say it earlier? Hold on. Yeah, he says, um, yeah, even while you're serving, although it says, sorry, along with your serving God out of love, don't abandon Yira entirely. Um, uh, and let the fear of heaven be upon you. Um, you should fear Hashem your God. Amru Chachamim avod me'ava avod me'ira. The Amru and they say ha ohev lo yishkach davar mimashet tziva la'asoso. Ha yarei lo yase davar mimashu huzhar mi'asoso. He's uh, the they say that 
uh, the one who is lo who loves God should not forget anything that he commanded him to do. And the one who fears God should do that which he's prohibited from uh, from doing. Sorry, he should do lo yaset. He should not do something which he's prohibited from doing. Yira mevogadol b'mitzvos lo sase. V'koshkei b'mitzvos hashmayos. Yira is a big uh, asset in the mitzvos lo sase and, and all the more so in mitzvos that you obey without knowing the reasons why. So I don't know what the idea is, but there does seem to be this thing where if you get so involved in Ava, then there's a part of you that like neglects Yira. And so, so, so you, you're saying that, um, that uh, in this progression here, yeah. so you keep the external mitzvos and perfection, you perfect yourself internally, lave, and despite all that, you're not uh, doing uh, uh, you're not doing any wrong. Maybe wrong is better than injustice in this interpretation and you're walking in his ways. Right. Okay. Yeah, you have something to add to that before we go to tomorrow? Uh, yeah, just I guess the uh, how the meaning of that person, I guess it, it, just to clarify, yeah. how the meaning of that person would have this would just come from like we're saying about like uh, he gets his point in Ava and you're, he, like I said before, he kind of blindsided to, it could, it could happen. Yeah. Um, but even what this person he's talking about, that person doesn't do that. Right. Like, he's like so perfected, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't make, he doesn't slip up when he's like talking yeah. to people or something. Yeah. Like, that's what I was kind of thinking about like this kind of injustice would be like, he accidentally makes somebody feel bad or something like that. Right. Like even like something as little as that. Yeah. Doesn't do that, and then you know he can just pull off the drug. Right. I'm gonna give you an example of this, and I'm gonna turn off the recording. Um, I've used this example before. Okay. So tomorrow you had a point on Gimel. Yeah. So now, now I don't know if it 100 applies because I was maybe imagining the preceding levels as being a little bit lower. Okay. Um, I also I have a different take on it. So feel okay. free to like say your own your own way. Yeah. So I guess that if the if the original stuff was people focusing a lot on like Torah and mitzvos, yeah. I'm not sure so if it was like that, then, um, I mean, I feel like you could have someone who's like very into like halacha, maybe even learning, but maybe is like not so like honest in, in business or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to yeah. me, it would be the person who, who is taking like, who the ideas are, are real to them in a way that they're applying it in the areas of their life that have to do with like interpersonal justice. Okay, so you're saying that's for Gimel, that it, that's why it's emphasizing that they're, they're not lacking and they're being Adam Lechavero justice, whereas Aleph is more about like the, um, the like being Adam Lechavero or, or more about like, like uh, what's the uh, division? Are you, suge I mean, are you suggesting yeah, so think, the division? Yeah, so I think it doesn't, I mean, I, I would have to think about whether or not it, it works with the specific uh, phrases, I guess, that, yeah. that we have before. So maybe it doesn't. Um, okay, I hear, but, I hear, yeah. I mean, lo follow avla, I also, all things being equal, I would be tempted to say avla is injustice. Um, and I, I, I like the move you're making that, like, we know from the Nevi'im that there are lots of people who prioritize, like, avoda Hashem in certain areas, like korbanos and tefillah, and then they, they do injustice. And this is saying that he's not doing injustice. I, I hear that, like, move. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah? My only question is that if it's not, like, I, it's from, from that perspective, it seems like it's not a uh, upward... Uh, right, that does not seem to be learning as an upward thing. And then yeah. I was kind of... If it's if it's not, then like the relationship between the two, I'm I'm lost at. Meaning, if 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 two ends off with like someone is like with their entire heart seeking God, and then goes to someone who's doing well with, between people or something like that, mm -hmm. and then like being followed by the lock of the drachma, which you could say is like a general thing, or you could yeah. say it's like a very perfected level. I'm taking a second. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, also would. Uh, at least in, I guess, the way that I'm understanding the parak right now, yeah. I would, I would say, uh, four would be like almost its own thing. Okay, hold, let's hold on four oh, for one yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Isaiah. Okay. I think I have a little bit of a different approach. Okay. To well, to three, but then I guess it, it just fits nicely with what we're saying for one and two so far. So maybe like one is saying like in terms of the the mitzvahs themselves, like the actual commandments. He guards the negative, positive, and, and negative commitments. He does the positive, he guards the negative. Yeah. Um, two is sort of referring to like the ideas, right? Like he, he, he does. Well, just, just make sure I understand. He does, he keeps the negative <laughs> commandments and he does the positive ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, two, I'm not sure exactly what we were saying for two, but I think it's something like, like he's, He's seeking out the ideas of Shem, and I guess he's guarding the the like the ideas of the Torah. Like yeah. he's not allowing, maybe he's not allowing like bad ideas to come to okay. the Torah or something like that. 
Um, but then three is sort of like the end game, like the highest ideal is he does, he does absolutely all he can to avoid doing any injustice at all to any, yeah. in any way. Yeah. And he does all the like the opposite of injustice. He follows the ways of Hashem to the utmost degree and like emulates them in the okay. world, which is the opposite of doing justice. Okay. All right. Good. That's closer to what I want for three, but I've got a different scheme for one and yeah, two. So yeah. on, on three, so would you say that uh, he would be saying that uh, uh, is not doing is is not doing justice. It's doing all the like the positive like in Hashem's way aspect, like like it's emulating Hashem positively. I guess, but really, my question is, mm -hmm. is that instead of like saying how like I'm trying to say, I've been trying to say it that three is like there's a part one, part two of three, right? Which is that like, there's like a level of not doing justice and then there's halakha if you're saying more. I'm, yeah. That is halakha I'm saying there's two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. It's like how he doesn't do any, any alos assays and asay, and he does mm -hmm. all the assays. He doesn't do, he does, he emulates Hashem fully in like positive ways and he doesn't do any injustice in the world at all. Yeah. How you know, as much as he could. Different. I can answer it. Because what I'm seeing is, uh, if, if, I mean, obviously we can't really emulate God in, in, in well, we can get the, at the best of some sort of emulation, but in that you know, God's by doing justice or it, it is not doing injustice. Meaning, if Halakta Vidrachov is to emulate God, then simply doing justice would be Halakta Vidrachov. That's kind of how I'm like, Okay, I, I'll, I'll I'll give you I'll give you an answer for that. Okay, okay. But okay, I, the, the, before I say my idea, I actually do need four for it. So I'm gonna that'll be the the header for you to go ahead. You give your idea for four. Oh, yeah. Um, it wasn't really an, an idea, more of like in order to fit things together. I'm gonna okay. Four, <laughs> hey, uh, its own thing, which is yeah. that like he gives what what this kind of perfected person does. Then he's like, it's very. Uh, this is a. Uh, not an easy thing to do, maybe. Uh, like, you know, God commanded it to be done uh, exceedingly would be like more than you would have thought. Yeah. Um, so just, I guess he's recognizing that like, okay, this is my, this is my, uh, my outline is what yeah. I'm going to do. This is very difficult and now I'm going to beseech you. Yeah. Okay, good, so good. That's how okay, good. okay, so mine partakes of, of some elements of everything. And this is what I, mostly what Isaiah and I came up with on Shavuos, but uh, I, I kind of modified a little bit of it uh, as, as I heard other ideas. I'm actually going to borrow a note from the meat Eri. Okay. I'm not going to take it. Trading. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I have to find a meat Eri, uh on the puzzle I'm looking for. Uh, give me one second. Oh, this is where he starts explaining it. Um, I think it's on English more mode. Yeah, okay. So he says Yishmur Ma'od. Ata Tivisa Pikudah Lishmur Mod. Bhu Hef Hafuch Ata Tivisa Lishmur Mod Biku Pikudaha. It is the what does that mean? Oh sorry, Bhu Hafuch. It's it's you're supposed to read it in the opposite way. You commanded uh to guard your Pikudim exceedingly. You just have to like flip the Lishmur Ma'od and Pikudaka. I think it's just smoother reading. Okay, what does it mean? that you don't miss the target on their purpose. Okay, so which means, and even though, I don't know how he defines Pikudim, um, uh, he might actually, oh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to borrow, I'm going to borrow a note from this. Um, uh, even though the intellect and, uh, and analysis uh, necessitate them or obligate you in them, the majority of the world only accepts them because of tradition. Because they don't know the, the depths of, the, of the, the principles by way of like investigation. The linear nefarish, tivisa, kamo kavata, tivisa, he says, means you established. You established and created. So this is what I'm getting at here. That a person guards them with the utmost guarding. So what is the utmost guarding? Since the intellect indicates them and your study obligate to them and therefore no one doubts them. I think he learns Pikudim the same way that the Radak does, things that the intellect um, uh, obligates you in. Okay, this is not actually the Miri that I wanted, even though it's the, the, the reference I wanted. Hold on. 
Uh, is there something that says Chukecha and, 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 and Shmira? Oh yeah, Es Chukecha Ashmor. Maybe let's, that's the one. Es Chukecha Ashmor. What, what, what possible was that? Just, uh, Meiri. Yeah, I'm looking at the Meiri though. No, Es Chukecha Ashmor. Um, yeah, here we go. This is the one I wanted. He says the same phrase. Es Chukecha Ashmor betachlis Ashmira ki ilu hasecha yechayven. That's the one I wanted. Okay, so Chukim, you don't know the reason. So earlier he said Pekudim, your intellect, uh, uh, you, you keep Pekudim with the uh, Shmira Ma'od. That's because your intellect already is telling you to do it. So it's very easy for you to keep. But he's asking for the Chukim to be Shmira Ma'od, which is that you understand them to the point where it is as if your intellect is telling you to do them. Um, Till I grasp knowledge of the reasons why you commanded them. Okay, so what am I pulling out of all this? That Lishmor Ma'od means keeping it for the reasons it was intended. Okay, so now let's go back and see everything. Okay, so. I like the way Isaiah was saying it, which is that it's talking about the los essays and the essays. Okay. Uh, I also like the way you're saying it, but it fits in better with the way I'm doing it. Okay. So that's level one of keeping. And it fits in better with your intention, which is uh, it's going higher and higher. Okay. So level one is you keep halacha. Well, I yeah. actually could if I wanted to. <laughs> that sounded so pretentious. <laughs> um, you could say that well, hmm. all right. Let, let me let me go through my spiel first. Okay, so so um, then you can you can modify it if you want. Um, so level one, pasuk one is keeping halacha. Pasuk two is the first time we talk about this shmira, which is you keep it, uh, you guard it. Okay, which means that you keep it in line with its reasons. Okay, bechol lev yidrushuhu, and you use it as a means of yidias Hashem. Okay, that's like in Mishlei, behold uh, da'ehu, in all of your ways know him. Okay, and that is the purpose of all the mitzvahs. So you've got people who just keep halakha, but they don't keep it for the reasons that it was commanded. Then you've got people who keep it, and they keep it with an intention to, um, uh, to do the, uh, uh, to fulfill the ultimate reasons which it's commanded, which is uh, Yudhiya Hashem. Okay, and I'll give you my favorite example of this, um, which uh, I have the translation of here. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is in the Avram Menorama. I'm talking about how um, there's two ways to keep mitzvos, right? There's the derech ha'am, uh, the path of the people, and then the derech ha'yachi, the path of the individual. So he says the derech ha'am is basically keeping halakha. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, we don't need to do that. The derech ha'yachi is the way of life directed towards the objectives and underlying ideas behind the mitzvos, and in accordance with the implicit goals of the Torah and the ways of the prophets and the virtuous and the like. So that's Keeping it for its intended purposes. Okay, and then he gives examples. Oh, I know, yeah, so kind of like what um, Isaiah was saying, of like looking at the dinner. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the type of living mistress in that, that I like. Living mistress in. I mean, yeah. So uh, he gives an example of this. So he says. Where's my favorite example? Oh yeah, here we go. For example, consider the Shabbos observance of three highly perfected individuals. The first person follows the derech ha'am, which is to keep Shabbos and to refrain from desecrating it. But he, so that's like the basic level, that's positive all. But then this guy adds a derech ha'yachi, namely through reflecting in a general way upon the purpose of Shabbos and contemplating the creation of the universe by remembering that the heavens and earth and all their array were created during the six days and that there did not exist any first cause with no prior cause except for the creator, may he be exalted and glorified, who gave us the Shabbos. Okay, so he basically, he keeps Shabbos, but he thinks about Shabbos, and he thinks about creation on Shabbos. I listen to a story of two Okay, Shabbos. there you go. Okay, second person's Der Hayaki does as follows. He will contemplate these matters in all their details. He will reflect upon everything that the first person did, but in addition, he will contemplate the entirety of existence and the components he can apprehend, in particular, from the center of the earth to the far reaches of the cosmos. He will delve into the wisdom of the creator, may he be exalted as manifest in the creation, and he will focus specifically on that which was created on the first day, then on the second day, then on the other days, in accordance with that which is stated in the second of Brachis. So he delves into knowledge of Brachis on Shabbos. Then the third guy, third person's Derech Hayakid is as follows. He will contemplate everything that the second person did, but he will delve so deeply into his scientific analysis and study that he will ascend to the level of true Kedusha. He will rejoice in his maker due to the radiance of the Shekhinah, which illumin illuminated him in his studies. He will attain proof of his greatness from the greatness of his creations. He will comprehend the bonds between himself and his creator, the bond of his intellect and the bond of the mitzvos, which is the, one of the intended objectives of the creator in the observance of our Shabbos. As it is stated, it is a sign between me and between B'nai Israel forever. He will diminish his involvement in anything that weakens this bond, and therefore he will 
will refrain from eating and drinking on Travis, which interrupts him from his studies. Not all eating and drinking, but it would interrupt him. He's not going to go to like Kiddush and hang out there for a long time. He will refrain, uh, sorry, and he will refrain from off topic conversation and certainly from idle chatter. Ultimately, through this derech, he will attain an inner fear of Hashem and love of the heavens and such a strong yearning for the living God that even when his limbs crave nourishment, he will not sense hunger since his soul is fattened with its portion, which it is, has attained. As David said, my soul is sated with the fat and abundance. Sounds will resonate in his ears, but he will be too preoccupied to hear them. Perceptible items might pass before his eyes, but he will not see them as if his eyes are covered. Through this derech, he will reach the realm of his desire and the hope of his soul. As it is stated, your name and the remembrance of you are the desires of the soul. Without a doubt, this third derech, of observing Shabbos is different from the second as the second is from the first. And certainly there's an enormous difference between the third and the first. And he says, um, similarly for all other mitzvahs. Okay, so that's puzzle two, that he is not only keeping the halacha, but he's keeping it as a means of Yudhiyah Hashem. Okay, but there's another level. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the third level is what Isaiah was saying, but I'm going to plug it in to my favorite two psukim in Nah. Uh, and if, if I, uh, right now, if I have an epitaph, um, you know, um, if anyone's in charge of it, you heard it here first. Making epitaph say he tried to fit everything into these two <laughs> okay? Because this, these are the uh, the, the two psukim that summarize Kol Torah Kula um, in Yumiahu nine twenty two and twenty three. Ali Chacham b'Chokmaso. Let not the wise man praise himself for his wisdom, which the Rambam says means perfection of midos. Let not the strong man praise himself for his strength. That's perfection of physical body. Let not the wealthy man praise himself for his wealth, that is material possessions. Only in this may the one who praises himself praise himself. Contemplating or comprehending and knowing me. That's the end of Pasuk 2. Okay, but the Ram says it doesn't stop there. Right, it it could have stopped there. It could have said Haskavidosi uh, Shani Echad or Shani Kadosh. Right, but it goes on and says. For I am Hashem who does chesed, mishpat, and staka in the land, because in these is my desire. So, so what happens is you reach the level of Yidiyas Hashem, and that results in a, 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 a compulsion based in knowledge of the halach to bidrachav to enact chesed, mishpat, and staka in the world that is beyond the halach to bidrachav of like, the mitzvah in Hilkos Deos. Like, there's a halacha bidrachav of, like, get good mitos. <laughs> okay, right? That everyone you, you start off with. Then there's a halacha bidrachav where you're so attached to Avas Hashem that you want to become a vehicle for implementing the Darche Tuvo in the world. And that's going to result in the bifurcated thing that Isaiah said of not doing injustice and doing chesed, stock and mishpat. And it's not a not doing injustice from keeping halacha, it's one where you're motivated by your Yidiyas Hashem to not do injustice. And that answers your question, which is, um, how is this a higher level? So the guy in halacha, in, in Pasuk Aleph, will refrain from doing injustice because he'll keep halacha, right? But it's not going to extend to those areas where you want to emulate Hashem and relate to every single created being in with, with, with based on your insight of of uh of must be and uh it's a higher level uh of, of perfection so it's the whole sequence it's, ah, it's all of it yeah yes uh on the first part of three i guess um and i think it's the same question that i asked uh isaiah actually can you explain how, how you're explaining three again yeah three is is so just let's just put labels on it mm-hmm. Aleph is keep halacha. Two is keep it for its purpose, which is Yudhiyah Hashem. And puzzle three is Yudhiyah Hashem should fulfill its purpose, which is to do uh, chesed, mishpat, and tzedakah, and to not do um, injustice. And by the way, I would translate it off as certainly he doesn't do any injustice. I think the Ibn Ezra says that. Let me just make sure. Ibn Ezra, this is not Tehillim. Uh, Ibn Ezra. Uh, yay! <laughs> they do. They do no unrighteous in Hawaii. Um, yeah. Uh, the meaning of yay is. Let me just look. It's in Hebrew. It's so much easier. Uh, 
Amar Rabbi Marino Shu Kamo Af Shokhani Bate Homer Shlo Asu Avla Lahavir, Piashem Bimitsos Losase, Rakhalak Badar Hashem Shem Mitsose, Yitakhin Shu Kamashmal Gam, Asher Lo Asu Avla, Yehashev Lahem Ki Halafu Badar Hashem. No, not so clear. Yeah, someone says it means like, um, certainly. Was oh, it the Targum? Hold on. Targum? Truly. Indeed, no, that's not like it. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but that, 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 so I'm learning it that it's just two sides of the same same coin. Yeah. And and it, what makes it different is that the ordinary guy doesn't do injustice because of halacha. This guy doesn't do injustice because it's keneged rasa on Hashem. So here's my question: Is what's the difference between not doing justice and doing justice? Why are those not? I mean, why is that looked at as two separate ideas when it seems to me if you do justice, you're not doing injustice. Because doing justice the way that the Ramam defines it is chesed is, you know, giving something more than you owe it. Tzedakah, uh, tzedakah is giving each crea uh, created being that which it is befitting for its existence. And mishpat is executing din. So those are all positive actions. So you have to, you'd also have to say not doing injustice. In other words, you can't not stealing, killing, depriving things of stuff, you know. So I'll give you an example of this. You want you want an example? It's just, it's just uh, I think it's pretty clear. Just the, the idea is that it's not a, it's not just to not kill somebody. Yeah, it's not just not kissing. Let me give you an example, uh, which we've done in Ashray. Um, Rabbi Yehuda and the weasels. And, you remember? Oh, I think I do. Um, in the where is it? Tzadik Hashem Beholder. No. Chanun Hashem Bera. Oh, Tov Hashem Lekol Barach Mavakol Masav. Uh, the Radak says, um, God is good even to the types of animals. Uh, 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 in these ways, you shouldn't destroy life unless it's for a need, uh, or to protect yourself. Um, we find uh, not to gather in the weasels with the refuse of the house. Let them live in the rafters of the house. Now that is not meant halakhically mandated, right? You don't have to like let the animals live in your house. And um, if he, so uh, this is Tov, but if he like, you know, like threw them out, that would be injustice in a divine mishpat framework, mm -hmm. even though it's not like injustice in a halakhic framework. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of how we're dealing like the birth process now, yeah. we say that that's on the level of like low of lishma? Um, I would say it doesn't have to be on the level of low lishma. Uh, developmentally, it starts off that way, but I would, I could say that, that, you know, uh, you could learn that the first three psukim are just painting a portrait of what the perfected individual does. He keeps halacha. He does everything as a means of, uh, he, he does everything with knowledge of the reasons as a means of knowing Hashem. And he, uh, his knowledge of Hashem culminates in doing a, mishpat and not doing not mishpat. It seems, it seems like it kind of has to be that way because we're, the first two psukim are where he says like ashray. I don't think he would say ashray to someone who is only like keeping the mitzvot because they're mitzvot, but they're not, I don't know, they're not viewing. So I don't know about that because in the first parak, he does say uh, ashray about someone who's not on this level, it seems. And I, I don't know exactly uh, how to define it. Oh, I forgot to say Puzzle 4. And 4 is saying that God commanded us to do this. Okay, meaning, uh, and I, 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 I tell you this on, uh, on Shavuos, is I remember the, I remember the day of the calendar. I remember the day that my dad, you know, who was Val Chuva, remember the day that my, it dawned on my dad that Judaism is more than just keeping halacha. He was like, wait a minute, halacha is only the first step. You know, like, like it just like, cause you think that a religion is you keep the religious laws. Realizing that the mitzvahs are vehicles of perfection and that God wants you to perfect yourself through the mitzvahs. That's like a different level. And it, it's not just extra credit. That's the whole reason why God wanted, why God commanded these mitzvahs, you know, so ata tzivisa pikadaka lishmor ma'od, and the lishmor ma'od is what was just spelled out from the first three. So, so sukim one through four is like like David said, David Luxer said that it's uh, highlighting like the ideal um, uh, that David and Melch is aspiring to, and then in the next half he's going to be asking for Hashem to like facilitate that, but that that we'll probably have to wait till next time. Yeah. Can you say again the lishmor ma'od how that? Yeah. So we saw from the Meiri that I 
pilfered. <laughs> that shmira means doing things for the for the right with an with an understanding of the reasons, uh, and and like carrying out those reasons. Okay, so it, the so that's what lishmor maod means, and it's saying God commanded the mitzvos to to be guarded maod, which means that when God commanded you to do it, it's not like he said like when when your mom says you know take out the garbage. So there she's just commanding you to take out the garbage. If you go and organize her spice cabinet, like that wasn't part of her commandment. That's totally extra. But with the mitzvahs, God commanded you not just to keep basic halakha, but he is actually commanding you. It's God's will that you go beyond it to the utmost extent that we described in the first three psukim. He commanded it, lishmo Does that make sense? Tamar? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a high level. Well, it's interesting because yeah. like, I was just thinking about we were doing something about that kind of touch that, that touch on the image of sit in our theater share, and then it made me remember about the whole image of sit in Shavuot share from last year over Ginsburg. And it's weird, it's weird because all the cases in the Gemara, it's one of those things where like there's going to be cases in the Gemara. Yeah, they don't really spell out what it is. Yeah, um, it's like an Amora telling another Amora like you have to do this. Like, you have to do it. Uh -huh. And it's like, what do you mean he has to do with him, with him as it is? Yeah. If he wants to, because he's at that level, he does it. That's interesting. Yeah, and yeah, it's like right. something like, they're, they're, like <laughs> they're like showing them why they have to do it. Yeah. Um, it's just like, yeah, no. It's the, 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 yeah, yeah. You would think that, that leaving him as sure it is, uh, by definition, right. not commanded. Right. Yeah. Also, I feel like you could also be like, maybe the other Amora was like, they were on the level where it's like, not right for them not to be doing it at that right. point. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to write a summary of this here so we can have easy reference next time. So, Pasuk 1 is keeping halacha, the low sas and the SA. Pasuk 2 is um, guarding halacha, uh, I, namely keeping it for its objectives, okay, which, uh, uh, which, which is Yediyas Hashem, okay, and then 3 is Yediyas Hashem culminates in the halachta bidrachav of doing chesed mishpat utstaka. Uh, yeah, of course, one of my uh, uh, novel, um, uh, uh, and not doing their opposites. Yeah, people don't use the opposite ground. It's just wrong. It like you you can what was it? You missed the Oxford comma. Oh. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah, in the Hebrew, it's uh, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth one is uh, God <laughs> commanded us to. Yeah, that's absurd. Um, to to uh, to keep halacha at this high level. Uh, it's not just extra credit. Yeah, David? Yeah, I may have just missed this. Are we calling this sequential then, or we're just saying that these are different things not in a necessary sequence? So it, it's it's sequential in a, um, in a like uh, components of the Torah plan way, like the foundation is halakha, the the you, you then need to keep halakha in order to get to Yediyas Hashem and like and then like that is going to affect you in this way I guess developmentally it is sequential yeah uh, unless I don't know what you mean like you know you can't do the last step right. without doing the second step you can't do the second step without doing the first step mm -hmm. okay yeah that's what I was asking thank you still has all the steps you still have all the steps by the end yeah 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 okay good all right so I, th I think we have good ideas um I like mine, but <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My one thing that I tried now is gonna try to do the one. Yeah. Uh, to make it work with the positive and negative. Yeah. And I don't think this works at all. Um, but I was gonna try to say that somebody who just doesn't do the negatives or doesn't do, but sorry, does yeah, doesn't do the negatives, but also doesn't do the positives is basically saying, all right, God, I'll play into like part of your system. Like I won't do certain things. I'm not gonna do anything positive. Right. You. you know, I'm not gonna like. Go and uh, buy a lula and shake it. Like, yeah, that'd be too much. Like, right, right, right. I'm not eat, I'm not eat but I'm yeah. not gonna like go do positive things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, well, that person be ostrich, right? I don't need it. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's the the trick here. I, I feel like is you could explain individual things, but to make it flow yeah. is good. And I feel like that's a sign that we've got a good shot is that it, that it flows. Okay, good. So next time the plan will be to do five, six, and 
five, uh, five, six, seven, and eight, and then maybe we'll um, start working on 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 uh, the next eight chicken, but we'll, we'll see how far we get. I just realized, uh, uh, oh. like a, a almost like a one-one ratio between four and eight. Four and eight. Oh yes, correct. Lishmore mode and to Altas mode. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so like, yeah. You guard them exceedingly, and then he's going to guard them. Oh, Eshmore Altas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just popped in. That's good. Okay. All right. That was that was that was good. Mm. So, okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just realized. I